Welcome to the tutorial setting up your modules and pegs. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at the network view for the first time. So let's begin. By default the network view tab is located behind the color tab. So if we click on that we can see the network view. To see it better make sure that your red focus is around the network view and then use the keyboard shortcut command F on Mac or control F on Windows to make it half of the screen and then do it one more time to make it full screen. So right now this looks like a jumble of boxes and wires but let's bring up the network view toolbar. So it's under Windows toolbars network view and then if we use the keyboard shortcut command A to select all or that's control A on Windows and then click on either of these two buttons here it really doesn't matter which one and then say OK it'll organize our network view for us. So for some strange reason, the right module is always pushed all the way out. It's hard to uh, read what's on these little blue boxes, but what it actually is, is each of these blue boxes, which is called a module, represents one of the drawing layers. Um, both in the timeline and in the camera view. So this is the Karate Rabbit mouth, this is the Karate Rabbit head, this is the Karate Rabbit body, etc. So the other three boxes that you see here are the composite, the write, and the display modules. So the composite does exactly what it says. It composites all these different drawings together so that they appear as if they are one image. That's what by definition compositing is. The right module is used to render. So any of the instructions that you want when you want to render something are done through the right module. And the display actually lets you visually see everything that's com connected right now to the composite in your camera view. To add and delete modules, it's really easy um, to delete them. You can just click on them and actually use the delete key. You can undo that if you like. Um, to add them, I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts throughout this tutorial, but you can also access them from the module library. So let's go back to our original view. Oops. So you can access the module library. I like to put it right below the network so later on I can drag and drop things from this view into the network view. and. Everything here, actually, when you drop it in, the, the network view is one of those blue boxes. It is one of those modules, as we call them. So I'm just going to delete that. So let's expand the network view uh, to take up two panel lengths. And uh, let's try to make it big enough so maybe it takes up about half the width of the screen, so it's not bad. So the first thing we're going to do is actually delete the right module. And the reason that we want to delete it is because this entire network eventually is going to be made into a template. And when you drag and drop this template of the cartoon rabbit with all its various views and all its pivot set into a scene um, that already has a right module, then every time you render, you're going to render both this character and the entire scene, which is what you don't want. The second thing we're going to do is click on this little yellow box on the composite module. And what that does is it brings up the layer properties. And you can also usually bring this up by double clicking on a layer, but you know in the timeline you don't have a composite layer. So this is the only way you can bring it up for something that's in the network view. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this to pass through and then say close. And as you may have noticed, the actual shape of the composite change from being a rectangle to being kind of like a, a tapered quadrilateral. Um, anyway, the reason that you want to make the composite pass through is twofold. Um, first of all, what it does is it doesn't flatten all these body parts together. And the reason that's good is because then you can add objects such as like a ball or a glass that the character is handling between two layers. So you have a lot more play. The next thing you want to do is make these drawing element modules non-animatable. And I'll show you the manual way of doing that. So let's zoom in. And look at the first one here. That's Karate Rabbit 02 Forearm. And then we do the same thing. We go to the little yellow box and click on it to bring up the layer properties. Then we go to the Advanced tab. 
and we disable the animate using animation tools option. And the reason that we make this drawing element um, non-animatable is because we're going to add a peg later on. And on the peg we can add all the keyframes for all the transformations for the animation that we'd like to create. Um, meanwhile keeping it separate from the drawing element because when you edit a drawing element you might screw up your timing and when you try to perform your timing it's very difficult to do it over your drawings. So it's good to keep these two elements separate. So I just showed you the manual way of going about that, but there is a faster way. What you can do is actually import a script. Um, we're not going to get into scripting in this tutorial, so what we're going to do instead is provide in the sample material scripts that you can import in yourself. So what we need to do first is bring up the scripting toolbar. So we go to Windows, Toolbars, Scripting, and then from the scripting toolbar we're going to click on the first icon here and that brings up the QSA workbench window and then we're going to browse for our script by clicking on the second button. And I'm going to select the animatable script.txt. Then what I'm going to do is click on the animatable script here in the left top, um, left hand column just to make sure that it comes in, it came in properly. Sometimes you have to double click on it. And we see here we actually have two scripts which is exactly what I want. And then you can just close this, it's going to save automatically. The second thing we're going to do is click on the second button in the scripting toolbar. And this is going to allow us um, to open up the script manager which lets us manage our different various buttons. And then I'm going to click on TB Set Animatable and click on the arrow that will indi that indicates that it'll be moved from this column into this column. So like that. And then also TB Set Not Animatable. And now I'm going to customize the button. So I'm going to click the first one and click on Customize Icon. And that was the, the Animate Yes. I'm going to say Open. So now it has its own icon, this letter A, to show that it's animatable. And I'm going to do the same thing for the non-animatable. I'm going to say animate no and open. And now it has an A with a, a cross going through it. And then I'm going to say apply or just OK. So now I have those two icons at the top of my toolbar, the animatable and the non-animatable. So what I'm going to do is zoom out in the network view. And then I'm going to just select all of my drawing modules and then I'm just going to click on this button to make them not animatable. And so now if we go into any given uh, drawing module, the animate using animation tool is disabled by default. So the next thing we're going to do is add pegs to all the drawing elements and we're going to actually do this in the timeline. I'm going to click, then um, hold down shift so that I can select all of my drawing layers. And then I'm going to click on the add peg button. So now both in the network view and in the timeline view, you'll see that every drawing layer has a peg. And here, let's, let's back out. And I'm going to do what I did before when I did control all um, and then click on one of these two buttons to organize your network view. And now what we want to do is actually attach all of these pegs to a master peg and we're going to do this in the timeline again as well. Now that these layers are all deselected I'm going to click on the add peg button and you're going to find the peg that you just added to your timeline at the bottom of the stack. So what you want to do is click and hold down shift and then click again to select all of your elements and their corresponding pegs and then you want to drag them on top of this peg to attach them all to that peg and so now that peg sits at the top and then what you want to do is double click on it to rename it and I'm going to name it master peg like that. 
then I guess I'll reorganize for the last time. Command A or Control A Windows. And now we have what they call like the full onion here. So it looks like kind of a, an onion shape with the green pegs at the top and the blue drawing elements at the bottom. So pegs by default have their own pivot. Um, but what we want to do, or the last thing that we want to do, is actually link the pivot that we set in the last video on all the different drawing um, elements um, to their corresponding peg so that they're pivots are linked. This means that if you decide to edit the pivot on the drawing layer, it'll automatically be moved or edited on it, the corresponding peg layer. And whenever you're adding keyframes or creating transformations on the peg layer, or you can actually do it on the drawing layer because it'll automatically be transferred to the peg layer, it'll take into consideration that pivot because they will actually have the same linked pivot. So I'll show you the manual way of going about that. So to view the pivot of a drawing element, you need only to click on the pivot tool here, and you can see it. So for the forearm, we see it's in its proper place. However, if you want to see where the pivot is for a peg, you actually need the Advanced Animation Toolbar. And you can get that by going to Windows, Toolbars, Advanced Animation. So it's this first toolbar here. Then if you click on the Rotation tool, you can see that the pivot for the forearm, which is highlighted in yellow, is some place between the chest and the upper arm, which is not in the same place it is on the drawing element. So in order to change this, we need to find um, that module in the network view. So it's right here, and let's zoom in to take a look. And then if we go into the drawing element for this peg, Karate Rabbit 024 arm, and then we go into the drawing tab, from the drop-down list here, Use Embedded Pivots, we have to say Apply Embedded Pivot on Parent Peg. And then you can close the dialog box. So now if we select the same tool and um, the peg, we see it's in its proper place. It's at the end of the forearm where it curves at the joint. And if we go back to the Pivot tool, we see it's also in the identical position. But once again, we can do this manually by going through every single drawing module to embed the pivot of its peg in the proper place, or we could also import a script um, that'll do it automatically. And once again, because we don't want to get into scripting, we're going to provide you with a script in the sample material. So to import a script, if you remember from last time, you click on the first button here in the scripting toolbar, so edit scripts. Then you click on the second uh, button to browse for a new script. And this time we're going to use drawing pivot on .txt. Then if I find it here, drawing pivot on, I double click on it to view that all the information is there. And then I can just close this window, it'll automatically be saved. Then I'm going to go to the second button again, the manage scripts button. And I'm going to look for it here, so it's pivot drawing on. By importing that script, I automatically have um, an icon and that function available as a script that can be put as a button in the scripting toolbar. And so it, here it is here, and we want to actually move it from its storage space into the actual toolbar. So I'm going to click on this arrow to bring it in the toolbar. And I also want to... Uh, customize this icon like I did with the, the two above. So I'm going to customize the icon. And this time it's a use drawing pivot underscore on dot png. So I'm going to say open and it looks something like this. And then I'm going to say OK. And then as you can see it, it appears here at the end of the scripting toolbar. So now I'm going to zoom out again. And I'm going to select all of my elements, and then I'm going to click on this button here. And now if we go into any given drawing element, we, say, we see apply embedded pivot on parent peg 
uh, in the Use Embedded Pivots dropdown, where usually by default it's Apply Embedded Pivot on Drawing Layer. So in fact, the script did work. So that's it for the tutorial, setting up your modules and pegs. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, creating a mixed rig.